So we'll start with that, and then we'll get into work and energy. So one example we talked about, speed bump, right? Car going over a speed bump. And, you know, the example there is when, how fast can you take that bump before you become airborne, right? You still want to have your maximum speed such that you remain in contact with the road at all times. So you draw a free body diagram. Normal force up. Weight down. And we'll assume the cars, we won't worry about any other forces. What we care about is what's happening in the radial direction. We'll assume the car is moving at constant speed. And so what we end up with is Newton's second law. It's a second law problem. Some of the forces is MA. And all we care about is the radial direction. When we're, something's moving in a circular path, moving in a circular path, so there has to be a force in, inward, in the radially inward direction, to cause its direction of motion to change. There might be a force perpendicular to that, right? There might be a force uh, tangent to that circular path. That would cause the speed to change, but not the direction. The force in the radial direction causes the direction to change, but not the speed. So in this case, what I want is the sum of the forces in the radial direction. And that has to add up to a special value we call m acentripetal. And so what I do is I pick radially inward as my positive direction. So that means that's uh, down is my positive direction because that's the center of the circular path that the car is traveling. And I get N minus MG is MV squared over R. So the, the only tricky part here is what does it mean when we say the car just loses contact with the road? How fast can it go such that it just maintains contact with the road? That's the point where N goes to zero. In is positive, so I have a negative normal force and a positive weight, right? Why do I pick in as positive, radially inward? So my acceleration is positive and I don't miss a minus sign later on. Okay, now we want to know the normal force goes to zero, Gesundheit. And we say the velocity is the square root of Rg. So that gives us the velocity. It doesn't matter how massive the car is, that gives us the velocity. It depends on the radius of curvature and the force of gravity, the acceleration of gravity, I should say.